this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Deepcool AK500 Digital. This is a nifty little air tower which has its own digital display on top, which is able to show you both utilization and temperature readouts at a glance, as well as having some subtle RGB lighting around the outside. This runs quite nice and quiet combined with the right fans in your case. And I'm going to show you how to set it up and install it with both Intel LJ1700 socket motherboards and AMD AM5 motherboards as well. And I'll leave links to those relevant points in this video down below in the timestamp so that you can jump straight to them if you need them. But I wanna start by showing you what's included in the box and talk about some important things that you need to know before installing this cooler. Showing you what's included, as you can see it all laid out here, and what you need for each and the things of import, so the really important things that you don't want to miss out on. Now, this tower comes with a fan pre-installed to it attached to the front. So that fan is set up in the direction that will pull air from the front of the case, blow it through the radiator, and then exhaust towards the rear. A single fan should be enough to keep your CPU cool. And as you'll see, it does have a number of cables attached to the bottom that you will need to connect up to your motherboard. And I'm going to show you later on where those all plug in because you need the fan power, the RGB power, and the USB connection for the display. You'll also need to make sure that you peel off this sticker on the plate on the bottom to make sure there's good contact between your cooler and your CPU, and obviously no problems there. Now you can remove the fan, and indeed you do need to during the installation process. You'll see it is fairly easy to do, so you just need to lift these clips on the side because it is clipped onto the radiator itself. You'll notice when you take it off, there's only one fan cable on there. And for reference, this is an FK120 fan, a 120 millimeter fan from Deepcool. Now there's only one fan included in the box. However, I happen to have a spare one knock it around the same fan. So if you can do the same or you want to purchase an additional one, it is possible to install an extra fan. So you can have two fans on this to cool your CPU even more effectively if you have a higher end CPU. You will note that there are actually brackets included in the case so that you can do this, but the fan itself is missing. Now the radiator, when you've taken that fan off, you'll see has multiple cables on it, USB connection and an RGB connector, which you'll need to plug into your motherboard as well. And for fan installation, for the additional one, you have the extra brackets included. Obviously, if you are going to install an additional fan, you'll need to make sure that both fans are facing the same direction on the tower. So make sure when you're putting the clips on, they're basically the opposite side to what they are on the fan that's already pre-installed. That way, both fans will be sucking air through the radiator and blowing it out the rear, and that will keep the thing nice and cool and help with performance of it. These are pretty easy to put in because you just need to push it into the fan holes on the top, and then you just wrap it round so that it will hook over the radiator, just facing from the other way instead. I will note, however, this setup with two fans might not work on every motherboard. For example, with the AMD motherboard that I'm going to show you later on, it just simply won't fit because the motherboard's too small, which means the extra fan hangs over the I.O. area and therefore wouldn't fit into the case. But it does work with the Intel. It's going to vary depending on the board, so it's worth checking before you go about putting the thing in your case whether it'll actually fit and work but the hooks go over the side of the fins so they just need a bit of teasing over there and then connecting up and then if you put the other fan back on you'll see the direction and logic of that note as i said though that you want to keep the fans off there during the installation process especially the pre-installed one because that sits over one of the screws that you need to screw into your motherboard so that's something to bear in mind, but it also pays to just pay attention to the direction of the fans and how they're connected up so you can see what it might look like if you're planning on doing the same and when you get to this part of the installation as well. If you're using two fans, you will also need to consider the wiring logic of these. I'd recommend using a Y splitter if you can get it. This is not included, an additional purchase that you'll need to source. And this essentially takes the two cables from the fans and puts them into a single connector that you can then plug into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Now, alternatively, you could use CPU fan and CPU optional connections on your motherboard instead and just plug those separate cables into those. However, I prefer putting them on one header because that means both fans are controlled by the same thing and there's no danger of them having different fan speeds or you having to mess around in the BIOS to try and change the settings of those. Now I'm going to look at the Intel installation. 
during this process. We're going to remove some of the parts to make it a little bit clearer. You can see with Intel, these are the parts that you need. So this is for LGA 1700 socket motherboards, and I'm laying the parts out now so that you can see them nice and easily. This is going to be used with an MSI Project Zero motherboard, which is a rear connect motherboard, but the logic will be the same for other boards as well. And the setup is pretty straightforward. You have this back plate that you need to adjust. So you make sure the pins are out to the four corners, the furthest corners, and then we need to be able to access the back of the motherboard. So it's easier to do it when the motherboard is outside the case before you get there. Put that through and push it so the standoffs sit through the other side. Now, I found that I had to hold the back of this in place so that I could then put these screws on top. There's these screws which then sit on top and they basically notch into the standoffs and then you have little bits pointing up where we're going to then attach the brackets to. You'll find these two brackets with markings on them, CPU that points in towards the CPU and then one, two, three holes on them. For LGA 1700, you want to make sure the standoff screws sit through hole two and then there are some thumb screws that you then screw those down and secure them. So again, watch out for the CPU markings because it has a little CPU marking on that bracket that points towards the CPU in the center. And then you make sure that the number two is screwed in there as well. And then tighten off those standoffs when you get to it to make sure that everything's nice and tight on the brackets. And then repeat the process on the left hand side so that both sides have nice tight bracketing ready to hold the cooler in place when you get there. Next up is applying the thermal paste. Deep Cool has some suggestions on the best way to do this. Now, I usually recommend spreading the thermal paste across the IHS. I actually found this is quite difficult to spread, but I did manage to get a good covering across the majority of it. And then you need to seat the cooler down over the top. As I said, take that fan off so that you can then access the screw on the right hand side. You'll notice that the wires are on the right hand side as well, so keep it that way and pay attention to this too because we're going to need to take the display off to fully, fully install it. But you could keep it on there and then just remove it when you get to the, that point. But also don't forget that you need to remove the sticker from the plate before you install that as well. So whip that off so that's out of the way, the important part of the build. And then you're going to install it over those standoffs. So onto the brackets that we just had, basically putting this down so that the screws sit on top of those. There's only two to secure, this one on the right hand side. And essentially what you need to do is tighten that and then you'll find the other one you need to put the tool through. So the long screwdriver that's come with the cooler through the middle of the cooler to reach the one on the left hand side. So notch on the right a little bit, so a couple of turns, then go through the middle and repeat that process. So basically you want to go back and forth between these two, tighten them up as you go. So take that top one off and you'll see there's a hole straight through the middle of the cooler. Now I found that I had to get down low to be able to see the screw, make sure the tool is going through and connecting up with it properly and that it was sitting properly on the bracketing so that it would tighten up properly. But once you've done that, you just basically notch those through and tighten each of them up until they're complete. You can peel off the sticker when you're ready to do it. I did it now just for your viewing pleasure, but then you want to stick the fans on as well. So clip that fan onto the side and then we want to connect up the cables for it. So the standard installation, if you've only got one fan, is pretty straightforward because that single fan connects up to the CPU fan header. So in most instances, this is in the top right of your motherboard and you can see it here. So you've got CPU optional. On the back connect motherboard, it's on the rear, obviously, again, CPU fan one. So we plug in that single cable into CPU fan header and that will then ensure that the fan is powered during use. If you have an additional fan, once again, use that splitter. Then you have the RGB connection that comes from the tower itself. That goes to the five volt RGB header. You notice it only has three pins on it, so don't try and use the four pin 12 volt one because that won't work. On this rear connect motherboard, it's at the back above this 24 pin power cable, but you'll need to check your own motherboard manual to try and find where this is located. Then there's a USB connection that allows you to control the data that's shown on the display from the software, which you'll need to download from Deepcool's website. And I'll leave a link to that in the description and that'll allow you to adjust that. USB connections are usually at the bottom middle of the motherboard and on this rear connect one there on the bottom back of it. So you can see 
where those plug in. Don't forget that or you won't be able to control the data that's on the display. And then go about installing the motherboard in your case. This is the Corsair 2500D Airflow. And you want to maybe neaten those cables up and try and run the excess of it to the rear so that you can tighten things up and tidy everything and make it look nice and neat. But just don't forget to plug those connections in. Now I'm going to show you how to use it with an AM5 motherboard. So this is the Gigabyte Aorus B650i Ultra motherboard, which is a tiny little one. And these are the components that you'll need for this installation process. There's actually a few less than with Intel, so it should make things a little bit easier. But you can see them all laid out here. And then what we're going to do is first of all, we need to set up the motherboard. So this is an AM5 socket motherboard, but it comes pre-installed with its own standoff already. There's some plastic standoffs and four screws at the top and bottom of the CPU socket that you need to remove first of all. So just get those out of the way. And it's the same across all AM5 motherboards. And then obviously the installation of the CPU, make sure that's set up and installed as well. If you don't know already, this is how it goes in. Gently slot it in, being very careful not to damage the pins. Put the latch down over the top and secure that in place. Then what we need to do is we need to put in some screws into the standoffs that are sticking through the motherboard. So where we removed that plastic cover before, now we're going to put these in place instead. You'll notice they've got black plastic bits on the bottom. Those are the bits that sit on those standoffs and screw into them. So secure them in there. And you've got four, so put them over the four standoffs that are passing through into those corners. Then over that, you're going to install some brackets. So there are some brackets included, which need to be seated in here. You'll notice that they have CPU written on them pointing towards the middle. And you need to just secure these brackets over the standoffs that we put there. And then secure them in place with the thumb screws included. So there's four thumb screws. You just use those to secure that bracket into place and make sure it's nice and tight. So tighten them fully with your thumbs and then use a screwdriver just to make sure they're nice and secure and that bracket's not going to move around. This is then the setup for that. And so the cooler will then sit on top of the bracket and you'll notice there's two screws sitting up towards the sky facing up towards you and that's how you're going to secure it but you do need to make sure these are secured nicely beforehand before going about installing the cooler note a couple of things one you need to remove the fan so that you can access the screw and two you need to access the other screw on the left hand side by taking the display off the top and putting the screwdriver through the middle of it so you have some thermal paste included and Deepcool recommends putting five dots on an AMD AM5 CPU, much like this. And then you'd seat the cooler down over the top and the pressure from the cooler would then push that out. Don't forget to peel off the sticker from the cooler before seating it down. And what you then want to do is basically just seat it down this way so it faces in the same direction and your screw on the right hand side sits over that bracket that we put in place and then you need to just tighten this one a little bit so give it a couple of turns then take the lid off of the display put the screwdriver through the center and screw up one on the left hand side what you will need to watch out for is i found it a little bit tricky to line that up so you may need to get low to be able to see from the right angle that the screwdriver is going through and it's actually making contact with the screw and that that screw is actually sitting on the standoff bracket that we installed earlier to make sure that you can secure it properly. So a few turns on either side, back and forth, repeat that until the whole thing's secured nicely, it's nice and tight and it isn't going to move around. Obviously don't force it, don't try and over secure it because you might damage things. Just tighten it up nicely and then put the display cover back on. And then we need to plug in the cables and obviously re-put the fan back on as well and peel the sticker off the top. For the fan wiring, you've got one single fan that connects up to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. So you can see here in the top right of the motherboard, CPU fan, you just connect that single cable up there and that will then ensure your motherboard can control the fan speed of the fan on the rad. And if you're going to install two, then you'll need to use a splitter and go into a CPU fan. You also want an RGB header, which is the 5 volt RGB header, which is a three pin connection somewhere on your motherboard. On this one, it's on the bottom left, but you need to refer to your motherboard manual because there may be others located on the motherboard. And you need to make sure you install the USB connection from the display 
This plugs into the bottom middle of the motherboard and that allows you to control what's on the display and to see the data on there. If you're securing a second fan, you'll notice that with this motherboard it's a bit problematic because it won't install on this side. The fan sits over the I.O. Now this is quite a small motherboard so you may well find that's not an issue on a motherboard you're using but I wanted to point it out with this one you couldn't do it so it's worth checking before you go about the installation process whether this will even work because there might not be enough space. Should be fine with just one fan it's perfectly good enough cooler to be able to handle it depending on the CPU you're throwing at it but it is something to keep in mind that you might not be able to do it. You can see with this MSI motherboard that there's no issues there that it sits on top of the shielding but doesn't go over it so it doesn't block it and then you get the cooler installed in your case now if you find that it's running a bit fast when you first install it you might need to go into the bios settings and have a look at your hardware settings for the fan speed i found that i had to go and adjust both the cpu fan and all the other system fans and make sure they were set to PWM mode. Assuming the temperatures aren't too high and the fans are spinning a bit fast, it could just be because they're set to DC mode instead of PWM. So just go through each of the headers you've used in the CPU fan header, obviously, and set it to PWM mode. I then ran some tests, and I recommend doing the same with either Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility or Cinebench or some other benchmarking software just to test to make sure the cooler is running efficiently. You can see I was maxing out around 70 degrees at the top end on this one. So actually it performs really well with two fans and brilliantly as well too. Don't forget to download the software to run it though and make sure you get the most out of it. This has been the Provoke Pro and if you found this useful check out the links in the description to other videos you might find helpful and drop me a comment down below, give me a like or whatever else you can do to support the channel is most appreciated. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.